And even more surprised to hear him try to make a case against our next guest, Kylie Jane Kremer, Executive Director of Women for America for First. This nice person, he said, was involved, uh, co-conspirator, if you will, in inciting the riot. It's absolutely absurd, first of all. Kylie Jane Kremer, welcome back to Newsmax. How are you? Thanks, Greg, for having me. And yes, today was absolutely insane watching this whole sham impeachment trial unfold. So your name was brought up. We're going to show that moment uh, in a sec. But did you know this was coming? I mean, you tweeted some stuff that I think is totally harmless and totally within you know, the parameters of acceptable political dialogue. We'll show everybody what we're talking about. But have you been receiving heat over January 6th or did this come out of the blue? Well, so I think right after January 6th happened, there was definitely a little bit of heat on us, but we just kind of kept our head down and were focused on our work. We had nothing to do with what happened at the Capitol. We held a beautiful event at the Ellipse where the president did speak. And, you know, we've just wanted to let this whole thing play out. Um, at no point did Congressman Swalwell's office or any person in the Democratic Party reach out to me to ask me about these tweets or to tell me. Um, to get my side of the story whatsoever, what communication was going on with the president's team, if any. Yeah. Um, and so today it was quite a shock because if we're going to talk about someone inciting violence, you know, I have now had serious death threats against my life because of this. It happened right after January 6th and they calmed down. And because of the shenanigans that Congressman Swalwell did on the Senate floor, victimizing myself and saying that I was inciting violence and a part of this whole thing that happened at the Capitol. Um, I mean, let's talk about that because he should be held accountable. I don't care if he is a congressman. All right. So, uh, number one, I knew it was absurd right away. You've been on this show before. I know you're a nice person. I know you're not crazy. Uh, so let's go to what happened just a few hours ago this afternoon. Congressman Swalwell making the case and uh, bringing you into the picture. President Trump retweeted one of his Twitter followers. That follower was Kylie Kremer, executive director of Women for America First, the group organizing the January 6th rally and the creator of the Facebook group Stop the Steal. Kremer tweeted, quote, the cavalry is coming, Mr. President, referring to the cavalry showing up on January 6th. She also added a website for supporters to RSVP and made clear what the message was. Hashtag Stop the Steal. And what did President Trump say in response to hearing that the cavalry was coming? A great honor. Oh, my Lord. Oh, I've heard the phrase, the cavalry is coming in dog food commercials. We played an insurance commercial. It is part of our language, our lexicon. People say it, and it just means help is on the way. But look, that's my interpretation. You tell us, what did you mean by cavalry is coming. Certainly that he has support and that millions of Americans support him. And we wanted a free and fair election. We wanted to see transparency within our election process. And so when I tweeted the cavalry is coming, that's exactly what I intended is help is on the way to let Congress and the Amer rest of the American people know that there are people that are paying attention and want to get this right. This is about the foundation of our country. Um, so that tweet like you said, has been used time and time again. I believe um, Mayor Bill de Blasio just recently said the cavalry is coming when speaking about vaccines in New York. Um, it's used over and over again in the political dialogue, and there is nothing about inciting violence in that tweet. And to do so is just to make it follow their narrative that anyone who supports the president or has conservative values is a domestic terrorist, a Trump terrorist, I believe that they've been calling us. Well, on the bright side, it's coming from Swalwell, and nobody takes this guy seriously, although his efforts are part of a, you know, broader effort uh, to delegitimize Trump supporters and use this kind of harmless language against us. I think it's interesting, two days before January 6th, you were on C-SPAN, and uh, this is what you were talking about that could happen. And uh, folks, you tell me if she's speaking about a riot or a coup. I think that we just have to let the process play itself out. It's a very complicated process. There are many different avenues that can happen from Wednesday. So we just have to be patient and follow along to see what is happening, not only in Congress, but some of these court cases as well. 
I mean, yeah, it was pretty cut and dry. They were well, cut and dried. It was complicated, but, you know, there were a lot of efforts uh, underway. There were lawsuits, and there was the Electoral Count Act, which was actually exerted for a little while on January 6th. That's the kind of thing you were talking about, I believe. Absolutely. I mean, what we wanted for that day was for Congress to be able to present the evidence about the election in these different states where they were protesting the Electoral College. And we were not able to see that because of the events that unfolded at the Capitol that afternoon. And while it was tragic, and my heart certainly goes out to those people that lost their lives, you know, we had nothing to do with that. And we wanted nothing more than for those senators and congressmen to be able to stand up and present the evidence on the floor um, about the election and how it unfolded. And it unfolded. And unfortunately, that process did not happen. We are now here a month later, um, and we've seen how it's all played out. But again, I mean, the president is no longer in office, President Trump. He's no longer in office, and they still are driving this narrative that he is bad and anyone that supports him is bad, and they're going to censor us and make us sit down and be quiet. And guess what? We are not going to be quiet and sit down. We are going to remain steadfast of our mission, upholding the Constitution, wanting a free and fair um process with elections. I love it. You're strong. You're on message and uh, can't tell that a member of Congress basically accused you of uh, inciting a riot and being part of a coup today on the Senate floor. It was a disgraceful moment uh, by Mr. Swalwell, one of many, I'm afraid. But Kylie Jane Kremer, hold your head high as you are. You did nothing wrong and uh, to be continued. Kylie Jane Kremer, executive director, women for America first. Thanks so much. Anything you'd like to add? Thanks, Greg. And no, I, you know, I would like to see Congressman Swalwell be held accountable for his actions. He's the one that's inciting violence against average everyday Americans, just like myself. And, you know, this process of how everything is so amped up and the rhetoric is just so vitriolic. We really need to tamp that down and remember that we're all Americans and that we should all be rooting for America to win. Well, if you ever get in trouble, uh, you can call in the cavalry. I will, I will be a member of that cavalry team. Uh, relax, Congressman Swalwell. All right, thank you very much. Good to see you. Thank and, you, uh, Greg. You bet, we'll be right back. You just watched Newsmax TV, America's fastest growing cable news channel now in more than 70 million homes. You can get Newsmax TV on your cable system or check your cable guide. And if your system doesn't carry Newsmax, call them, tell them you want Newsmax TV because we're real news for real people.